What's going on, y'all? Hey. What's going on? Come on in the room. Bring your ass in the room. What shouldn't have said that? This is not even my stuff. <laughs> I'm already messing up. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hope that you all are doing well. Y'all here? Me drinking the water and stuff. What's up, y'all? Let me go ahead and invite. Hold on. Where's it at? Come on, there we go. Invite. Somebody, because today I have the honor and the privilege of interviewing my bro, Russell, for his newest, latest project called Transit Worship Volume 1. Um, let's see. What's going on? Hi, Bubs. How are you? Oh, Lord. Uh, applying faith and walking by faith. My, my God, today. That's all I can do. That's all I can do. Put that faith to work, Charlie. Okay, and that's still one of my favorite songs from you. <laughs> but um, before we really get into the meat and potatoes of this interview, the first thing I want to ask you is this. How has your mental health been? since your last project child amazing okay let me just explain yes let please explain. um since the last project well the last project we did um i did the become experience um that was march of last year do you realize how long ago that was that we about to experience the anniversary of that wow project. that's crazy i wasn't even thinking about that that's crazy wow. yes sir but um after i put that project out i was started working on another project immediately after and um during that process i became a homeless evicted man mm. so <laughs> in that process i don't think my mental health was all right because i didn't know what was going on of course yeah so, uh, mm. but I was in that condition in that state for five months. And during that mm. five months, I worked on this pro on this uh, project that I have out now, Transit Worship Volume One. Yes. Um, and after I got through with that project, if you notice, I didn't promote it. I didn't say nothing to nobody about right. it. Right, right. It like, just kind of got thrown out there. Beyonce and dropped <laughs> out there. <laughs> Okay. So I was just emotionally exhausted. But mm -hmm. um at this point I feel like I am well and it is well with me. That's good. How about you? Um I'm kind of going through my little transition right now. <laughs> so um but again it's just uh, one thing I'm realizing is that when you're asking God for something greater and you're truly believing, you have to kind of somewhat prepare yourself to the best of your ability for things to fall apart. Because what's falling apart is what you expect God to do, as opposed to walking by faith and letting God do what God's going to do, because God already promised it. So I'm kind of in that area of my life right now. So it's good that I'm having this conversation with you. And I guess what I want to ask, because this, is, this isn't one of the questions that I have for you, but it just popped into my mind. Like during those five months, what, despite what was going on outside of you and dealing with your own thoughts and emotions, like what did you do? to kind of sift through that, to hear God's voice in the midst of all of that? Like, what did you do? The most amazing thing that happened to me was I found community. I ended up in a mm, church. Okay. So, like, that changed everything. Mm -hmm. So, even in the midst of being out of place, felt I felt a bit out of place. Mm -hmm. I still had a sense of home. And um, because I had that sense of home, it became very easy to serve and give of my gifts and my talents in the community. So, and that started working for me. So, yeah, like that was a great help is establishing community and making sure that you have support systems in place because a friend is born for the day of tragedy. <laughs> Oh, a friend is for them days. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I have my stuff on mute. I was trying to be careful. Thank you. <laughs> but um, 
So would you say that's kind of like what, one of the things you've learned about yourself from um, the past project? Did you have community before then, or at least community like this? Okay, for me, me going to church consisted of me clicking on a YouTube video. Okay. And, okay. and, and when I got tired of hearing whatever, I could just click right off. Oh, yeah. Praise yeah. God. Okay. So like, Red button. I would... I was I was an e member who didn't e participate and didn't mm. e tie. So right. like <laughs> right. I really wasn't really engaging in the community. I was just more so viewing a church service. I got you. So with this project, Trains of Worship Volume One, make sure y'all go listen. It's all streaming sites right now. Um, you were able to actively participate and engage um in person. So it yeah. kind of shifted the whole thing for you okay okay awesome and here we are y'all with russell's latest project which is called transit worship volume one now how did that name and that project oh you already said that you already said that he already said during your uh those five months you came up with it but i guess what came how did you come up with the name for it i'll say that how did oh, you come up with the name I, transit um the name came because my pastor asked me a question. He asked the praise team. He challenges us a lot and asks us a lot of questions. But this particular day, he came in. He was like, I know y'all sing other people's songs and all of that is good. All that's wonderful. But those are somebody else's words and those are somebody else's journey, somebody else's story, somebody else's alabaster box, so to speak. Right. So... He was saying, so I challenge you to find out what your worship sounds like. Mm. And I immediately, I'm one of the people, don't challenge me with nothing. Oh, yeah. I'm going yeah. to it. Don't challenge. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> okay. Mm. So immediately, the very next day, I was in prayer. I was staying mm. in a shelter. During that five months, I was staying in a shelter. Mm -hmm. And on that property, it used to be a um, a convent for a church, okay. the Catholic okay. church. So there was a mm -hmm. cross on the property. Okay. Every morning at 5 a.m., I would go out and I would pray at the cross. Mm -hmm. So um, at 5 a.m., the very next day after my pastor asked me that on Sunday, Monday, I go to the cross. I'm out there praying. And I just, instead of praying and saying words, I started singing words. Mm, okay. So okay. that was, I just, I just sung. And what came out is the second song on the record, In Your Direction. Yes. So yes. that was birthed out of answering the challenge. So I, because I was in transit, mm, doing that process, mm, okay, I okay. called it transit worship. I know that's right. So basically, it's the it's the worship to get you through yeah. to the next yeah. level. It's just you know the in between space or like the part that you have to do because God's going to do His part. It's going to it, it want to make sure that you do yours. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's get into Transit Worship Volume One a little bit with some of the songs. Now, one of the first songs is called S M. DH. Now you would think that means scratching my damn head. That's what I thought at first. But I love how you play on words. You play on some of the social things and kind of just drip it in 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 in, in holiness in <laughs> God your own like way. It. So instead of it being scratching my damn head, it's called save, move, deliver, heal. Now I'm gonna hurt you. When I first heard it, I'm like, wait a minute, this sounds a little familiar. Here is it a little transpose or something. Is we down a key and something? Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> so we uh, saw me. I, that's why, because I'm like, wait a minute, this sounds very familiar. And it was one part while I was waiting toward the end, like, okay, this is gonna be the part where the Jesus part come in. And I'm like, what happened to it? I don't know. <laughs> but but how did how did that I guess that evolution come about? Like from the actual song Save Heal uh Deliver to now Save Heal Deliver. I mean, save, move, deliver, heal. How did you get to that point? Thank you. Great question. I thank you for <laughs> you paying attention. Attention to detail. Teamwork is key. I love it. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. with that song, um, let me just say, is being in community was the best thing for me. Right. So 
So I got to actually sing this stuff in a church setting. Mm. When you met me, you knew I was not making this music for a church setting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now I had to like translate what I meant into mm -hmm. this setting. You get okay. what I'm saying? It's who I am, what I mean, what I'm about, what I'm called mm -hmm. to do, but bring it into this setting. I got you. So what ended up happening is I ended up doing a concert and I opened up with Didn't He Do It. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's another good one, too. Oh, Bust it open on that stage. Project. And that was such... You get what <laughs> Let me just say, I got roasted online because of that song. Okay? Oh, the video I, on YouTube, I want to see. I took some abuse over that wow. song. But I did gather some support as a result of the abuse that went around that song. Okay. So, um, what I found out is certain stuff don't work in certain settings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hard lesson, but a lesson learned very quickly. But I turned it around, and by the end of the show, we was all together on one accord. That was like a wrong choice to start out with that. In the so church. what do you think it was? Because, I mean... Well, I think I know what it is, but like, shouldn't the focus really be on the message of the song and what that meant? Like, you were just, ex in a way, being more liberal with how God has has taken you from this position position to another. Go ahead. When you have church mothers with church hats, let me tell you, like, them words, the lyrics to the song would not even come out of my mouth. I end up hype, hype man and like I was at a rap concert. So we just kind of hi hyped and clapped through them verses. And oh, I just kept oh. doing the hook over mm -hmm. and over because I could not even get busted open on that stage to come out my mouth <laughs> on that stage. I could not get it without, it, without it being dressed up in, in, in the world, even though you're yeah. telling a story about how you are in the world, but not of the world, because now you're, okay, okay, I got you. But the, the hats was just too important. It's a, it's a it's detector in the hats or something, I don't know. It, it just, it just, I started having that flashbacks from being pinched by old people mm. growing up, and I was like, I don't want no smoke. Yeah, the ones who the offer Lord. you mints, and they really need to take the mints themselves, mm, those people, I got you. Okay, <laughs> yeah, shout out for the Kung Lo, Kung Lao mothers on the, front, <laughs> on the front line for Jesus. Amen. Okay, so um, let's get into uh, the song In Your Direction. Um, go a little bit. Well, you're kind of already deep. You kind of like already answering my questions anyway. <laughs> no take. But um, I guess with um, In Your Direction, like... What 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 is your heart's desire for people when they hear this song? Like, what is one thing you want them to be reminded of when they hear in your in your direction? Okay, capital U. I, I believe I believe this that no matter how much progress we make in our lives, no matter how focused we are, there is still something in your life that can stand to be adjusted. There is still something in your life that needs work. And there is still something that you need to submit to God and say, yes, yes, Lord, Lord. here I am, Lord, mm -hmm. that we all have that thing. So I feel like it's going to that song will forever be relatable. And then on top of that, musically mm -hmm. with that song is I know that people love hearing me do three part harmony stacks. Yeah, that's always like those are nice. Uh, that's always the thing that people be like, now, I Hold on, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yep. so I knew I had to do that too. And then I had, I was able to put a little bit of Casey Jojo, Jodeci feel on my record. In the mm -hmm. name of the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I found the way to kind of, because it's like, there's no way that the, in my opinion, the church's purpose is to help minister to the world, which means that the church has to start 
speaking the way that the world speaks so that the world can get caught up. I think when we start creating these limits and lines where or or, or um, boundaries that really restrict people's praises and their worship and their story. We got a whole song that says, you don't know my story, all the things that I've been through. But when I Come talk on, about Sean, it, you. but when I talk, thank you. But when I talk about it, now it's, it's simmered down. So I'm glad you were able to still tap into a person's spirit who may still be in the world. But I, I, I'd rather, <laughs> I, I'd rather <laughs> the instrumental be worldly, but it'd it be by Jesus. Go ahead. It, them, them niggas ain't in the world. Them niggas ain't worldly. Them niggas is little, little, what is it? Cedric Haley and the Haley singles. I remember them from uh, uh, the Quartet. And they spit, here's what I'm saying, even though they were singing about sex and stuff, they still singing Quartet music. They is still a Quartet group. So, it's it still translates. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It still translates. It's still on the same playing field. Okay. So, but I would also like like to say is that for me is I I finally took myself out of the box. I had to take mm. myself out of the box. It wasn't that people had me in a box or had me feeling away. It was that I. I know how feathers get ruffled and how easy it is to piss off the church. And I just, I'm like, I just got a community. <laughs> Understandable. So it's like, I, I just got here and I don't want y'all to be like, not, let me ask you this. Do you still get those kind of stares and looks in the community that you're in now? Oh, brother, a month ago, I had someone pull me aside after church. I sing on the praise team. And if you want to see that, it's Bethesda Worship Center, San Antonio. We on YouTube. We on Yeah, I just Twitter. saw. I'm going to talk about it because you talk talking about your album release party later on for that. But, but go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. But um, I had a month ago, I had a brother at the church come up to me after church and was like, uh, brother, you might want to remember that you're still in church because that was a minute up there. You got a little loose. And you forgot where you was at. And I was wanting you to come on back. But eventually you came on back. And I just want to tell you, be mindful of that. So what was it that he wanted you to be mindful of? Bruh, I, I'm, here's what I'm saying. On the praise team, I am the book. You get what I'm saying? I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying, like, was it your mannerism? Was it the way that you were, like, what was it to oh, be like? like? Bro, I did, like, I did a thing where I like dropped to my, dropped down towards my I crouched my knees down so it probably looked like I could have been throwing that thing, but I was facing towards the crowd so nobody was behind me. Right. And I wasn't bent over either. So, sir, get your life. If David can dance out of his clothes, I'm. I'm just gonna dance real hard with mine on. How about that? I mean, well, maybe it. Oh, I don't want to say nothing. Oh, but but I it really may have woke up something to where it was like <laughs> you talking about. I gotta slow down. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you crazy. I don't know because my thing is, is at the end of the day. Y'all should be glad that there are people in, in church giving God praise. That should be the most important thing. If if all these things can distract you from being in God's house, what does that say about your attention span when it comes to increasing your faith? Like, why limit someone else's praise that they're giving genuinely and trying to share with other people who are hurting, but because I happen to do a move that you've associated with the world. Now it's a problem and an issue. Isn't God still being exalted through all of this? Isn't that the purpose? I don't know. But that's why I appreciate you because it's like, even though you're finding community, I think you're building a community that's going to support you for who you are and express how you, ex and allow you and accept how you express yourself because at the end of the day, they know that God is working through you, using you as a vessel. It just means that God uses you over in this area that maybe the church may not be able to get to. Yeah. Shouldn't it be smart to work with me as opposed to work yeah. against me? Because I can tap into these people that y'all struggling to tap 
been to for so long, but I don't know traditionalism and stuff, but you're doing something that's revolutionary. And, I, and this is where I want to shout out my pastors. Shout out yeah. to Bishop Milton and Pastor Deborah Smith because they always tell me to continue to be exactly who God has called me to be and exp give my expression because that is what's going to be the most effective thing is if it's genuine and it's not contrived and worked up. And so... Orchestrated. I'm in my lane doing what I'm supposed to do, praise the Lord. So right. my leaders are cool. Um, the Lord is cool. Nobody's mad except the devil and a couple of pissed off saints. And who cares? Okay, thank you. Who cares? Because I'm going to do it anyway. And then on top of that, I'd rather you bust it open in church and bust it open on that stage. Hey, the my God. Okay, I'm just saying. Bring that to an end. You don't need change. Okay, yes, bring the two you don't need change. That's a bar. Now let's get to um I believe the last song on Transit Worship Volume One, which is Bless Your Name. How did that come about? Bless your name. Okay. So if if anybody remembers my first interview, I told y'all that I found my way in solo land by singing in the club. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my most famous song was Sing Ladies. I would turn mm -hmm. a room no matter what. But the problem with Sing Ladies is that that bridge is so high. First of all, the key that that song is in, I am a baritone. The key of Z. And that, that song is so high. She starts off Oh, we're up there from and we're only going higher from there mm -hmm. and you heard that that wasn't comfortable mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so by the time I make it to that bridge I have to drop down a whole octave so okay. <laughs> then I get to go back to oh, 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 and the end <laughs> right right so, right so I was like there's gotta be a way for me to do that and not do it like that Right, right. So I I started writing Bless Your Name. I wrote Bless Your Name in 2018. Mm -hmm. 2018. I, I wrote it exactly to the single ladies track. So like that's where it got the formatting and the movement of the song from. Mm -hmm. So when I got through and I got this good church context, and I found out that these people like for me to vamp out a song, and people goes up, yeah. and folks gets in the aisle, and gets the dancing, mm. and, and the church goes up, for real, for real. I was like, oh, I'm gonna vamp out for Jesus. Okay. So I, I, mean, took, I took my Beyonce stuff, and I brought it to Jesus. That's what you should do. That's the purpose. I mean, he'll okay. even Kiara Shear, who was a vocal beast, was singing Love on Top and had to stop for a second and breathe. Even Leandria Johnson was like, the hell keep singing it in Beyonce. So, again, you have to be quite a vocalist to attempt a Beyonce song, but the fact that you were able to do that and to put your That's Russell brand on it, I mean, once again, you're, you're using... You're in the world, but not of the world. You, you, you in it. You can't escape it. You cannot escape it. So you might as well learn how to illuminate your light within the world and inspire others to do it. So um, we want to say congrats on that project. Congrats on your first, if I'm not mistaken, your first album release party for Transit Worship Volume 1. Um, and again, y'all can go on YouTube to see snippets from it. Um, and I was listening to it before we started because I wanted to make sure I heard it because I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't know this video was here. So it was it was great to see the people up, the people engaging, uh, the people being supportive. So like after the album release party, like how has the inspirational world's feedback been so far? Like the praise, the critiques. We already talked about a rebuke. Like how has that whole thing been like since that release party? Let me just say like this record... I, because I have been now singing in the church space and I've been doing gospel concerts and featuring and all of that and 
hosting gigs and stuff. I've been doing all of that. So mm -hmm. I have, I've been embraced in church the way I never expected to be. And wow. If you go back to that first interview we ever had, mm -hmm. I had no expectations of being received well in church. Mm -hmm. So for the opposite to be happening, it's amazing. It's only God. It's right. only God who can who can put you in the right context at the right time and make everything right. Right, right. So you felt like when you were on stage, and if you can't take me back to that moment when you were on stage and you were finally vocalizing your album and ministering through your album, um, how did it feel at that moment? Did you feel like you were, like you said, the right place, right time? Like I'm all the stuff that I've been through is leading me up to, to one of these moments, which is going to be foundational for me. Like, how was it in the moment when you were doing that? You're going to make me cry. That's the um, point. Yes, be real. Be you, emotional. You got to let it out. You was a mess. But um, if you if you watch that video, you, you can hear that I pray throughout that whole song. If, if you listen, go back and watch that video, you can hear that I pray throughout that song because it felt like graduation. Mm, it, okay. it felt like I didn't fail. Like all, all the five months of being homeless was about this. Mm. And, and, and it agreed in the room. And I had never, never experienced nothing like that. So wow. you so you can just hear me, you want that glory, you want that all of that, I'm doing all of that out of gratitude mm. because I would, I would have much rather went off in a praise and prayed than sung that song, honestly. So that's why mm. every time that there was a break where I was known to be dancing and putting on for the crowd, I couldn't help but just give God his due in that moment because it was like... The realization of it. Not pomps and circumstance. Pull my tassel, Pull my tassel aside. Okay. okay. Hallelujah. Okay, <laughs> and that's amazing for you to be able to experience that. And it also, again, your story, no matter how rocky the start might be, like they say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. You are literally going to help people who may have been in similar situations. Um, one of the situations being, let's just be all the way real being part of the LGBT community and finding our, our place and our lane within the um, collective expression of our gratitude for God. So yes. the fact that you're doing that, even though you may face a little backlash, it's amazing to hear that you're receiving more love and affirmation as opposed to backlash. So it kind of keeps you going, but it also inspires those who are in the closet, those who may feel some sort of shoot shoot and game. What? Andrew Caldwell back up, messing up my words. <laughs> Loose this up, devil! Loose! Andrew Caldwell be trying to mess everything up. <laughs> but to deal with the guilt and shame that may come with how the Bible has been used to interpret certain scriptures to denounce people's experiences, but yet they fail to remind themselves of what Christ did, which was loving and affirmational. And I don't know if that's a real word, it felt it in my spirit, but being able to love people where they are and not to when they get to a certain level. So the fact that you are loving yourself where you are and allowing God to work, like those five months was preparing you because it's like, once you conquer yourself and once you conquer the, the 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 other side of you that the devil can use to influence or to destroy you or to take you off course or give you the illusion that you're being taken off of your course. When you start re realizing that power within, it's like, baby, I don't care if I got to stand in front of a whole bunch of Judases, a whole bunch of people that want to kill me. I'm going to let my light shine because I already know what Christ did for me. Yes. And I'm just crazy enough to believe it. Yes, sir. So that is amazing. So, um... And this is, I got two more questions. This next question is really, really good. I like this one. Kind of compliments it. I got I to gotta say something based off what you said. Go ahead, go ahead. Move is, yes. um, my pastor and with the praise team was on at the march, the MLK march here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest march in the country. So I just thought we was doing the little church service before... No, 
No, nigga. I was on a stage with a Jumbo Tron. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. No, I was on a stage with a Jumbo Tron, bruh. Um, mm. and, and I had so many of our community come up to me and be like, oh, my God. You really bless me. I'm saying that the trans girls, the trans men, the gay boys, they was all like, hey, you was our blessing, baby. And I was like, oh, I was just trying to get some oxtail soup, baby. That's all I was trying to get. <laughs> just give me some food from the green room. I just want some, I want some macaroni and cheese from the green room. That's all I want. It's some greens. Can I get it hot? That's all I want, Lord. <laughs> Wow, but that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the important part. Like, you're ministering to the lost and forgotten. Had no clue. When, 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 nigga, now you know. <laughs> and if you don't know, now you know. Okay? So, with completing this recent project, and again, being on stage and having God really show out, not just throughout the entire time, but even through your transit, to this place, but like really showing out even in the moment of you ministering to other people and having that amazing feedback. Like, where is your relationship with God now at this present moment through all of this? Like, what's the progress report with you and God right now? With, with me and God, I never get to sit and rest and celebrate because there's always a next hurdle. There's always a next thing to overcome. Mm -hmm. and, and we're already at a next thing right now. And I'm like, well, why are we moving so fast? <laughs> Can you stop yeah. running? God just sitting there like, nigga, you asked me for this. This is, this is what you wanted. I'm just trying to make sure if you prepare for it. But I'm glad that in the midst of, because you have human moments. I mean, you've had songs where you literally said, God, what the fuck am I gonna do? God, I trusted you. You you said you've been very honest with God. So the fact that you're being honest with us about your relationship with him, it actually helps people to want to connect to God because it's like, wow, God cares about me in my human moments. I've been told that's not the case. I've been told that my human side is nasty and dirty and it's we're filthy rags before God, but yet I have people that I know know that I don't know coming into my life, whether it's music, whether it's videos or whatever, that's ministering to my humanity, the side of me that Christ is trying to get me to link the bridge between uh, yeah. God and man, which means the, the, the love. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're able to do that and go through that and document that you may be in the hurdle that you're in now, but trust me, you are going to have more of your God. Why did you give me this life, Beyonce? type of stuff when when the money come in when the production gets bigger when the 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 you have people that's producers now want to produce your stuff like and i was and i told you this last time i hope that you really are ready for what god is really doing in your life and where you're about to go because you're you're like crazy you're radical and you're a revolutionist and again like the fact that you got those who are gatekeepers in the church for a long time, you know they're going to say things, you know they're going to spin and twist narratives, and it's like, that's fine. Y'all did that to Christ, so I'm, I'm used to it. So I just want to commend you for that. Um, let me see. Uh, do you have any lasting words for the people who are viewing this and then those who are going to view this? Like, what is one thing that you want to leave the people with in reference to encouraging them? I want to leave the people with, first of all, is no man is an island. You can't do it all by yourself. But what you can do is start with what you have and what you do have connections to. Yes, yes, yes. And, and what I'm grateful for is because you were like the first connection I had outside of San Antonio, mm -hmm. honestly. And for me, I appreciate you. You walked with me through the heart. That five months of being homeless was nothing compared to that first, mm -hmm. that first yeah. six 
six months of being an artist when I did the record in 2021 and then the first of the year I'm putting out a single and every week we putting out a song and, and you making videos every week for this. <laughs> Lyric videos, audio books, all that. So what I want to say is thank you and and everybody Everybody that can watch, who's rewatching this, Bub the God is his name on Cash App. If you could send him a seed, send a blessing, because I can't pay him what he's worth, but he has been such a blessing. And I pray the increase of God over your life, the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and add yeah. no sorrow with it. I pray that he increase your coming and your going. I pray, I pray that you're blessed coming in and going out. Yep. I pray that everything that you do increase in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that he's the head and not the tail above only and never beneath. I thank you, Lord, that he is the lender and never the borrower again. In Jesus' name. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Look, clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus all over the let me tell you something and i receive that and that's how i know that this stuff is real that's how i know it's god is real and, and and the thing that's crazy about it is that i'm realizing and accepting that god is real for me for real because when when you're walking by faith a lot of times we try to do god's job and figure out okay how this gonna happen when it's gonna happen how this gonna happen when it's gonna happen but when you have faith it's like like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know it's going to turn around for me. So when I have conversations in the midst of my transit, what I'm going through, that actually affirms what I'm doing. Like, I've been getting so much affirmation these past few days to where it's like, okay, a nigga really preparing himself because the things that are happening behind the scenes is having me challenge a part of myself where I struggle with my fear. I struggle with what could happen. And just like how you said, the first six months, it was literally the fact of, okay, I'm literally going to place my faith in God and in me so that I can believe that I can do it. And after growing up in a world where we've been taught for so long and having fear projected on us that we can't do it, when you finally start doing things that matter to you and it's just you in the beginning, that's one of the most terrifying things because it's like, I'm literally about to see if all this stuff that they say about God is true and I don't know if I'll be able to handle if it's not like for a lot of people that's their last stop like this is it after this it's dirt nap time by my choice but that's how you know God is real and that God really works is when you completely let it go and that is one thing that I've low-key been struggling with in reference to certain things in my life but I have have to be aware enough to see the opportunity so that when the opportunity with you came about, you know, uh, when we first started um, connecting all the way up till now, I know that God is in here somewhere. And I'm also doing a part of my um, humble work, which means being able to, to grassroots. We're, we're building community together. We're establishing community together. And like you said, we can't do it by ourselves, but it starts with us. So I'm so grateful for what you said. I receive all of what you said in my life. Again, it just makes me more excited. It helps to reduce the nervousness and the anxiety that I've been facing because it just reminds me that I'm doing my part and so is God. And I just got to be ready for what God has for me. And I'm so grateful that God has been blessing you as well. What's that one thing that you used to say all the time? Many great men and women. What did you say? <laughs> Great men and women are only born for the time that they're needed the most. And guess what? You're needed the most. And this is exactly what that manifestation looks like. We're needed. The, we're needed the most. You're needed in reference to your music and still telling people, look, you can still be connected to God, even though the interpretation of God is this way. Get to know God for yourself. And I'm a living testimony. Now, I'm a little bit more radical with mine. <laughs> that part. Because I'm going to say busted open on the stage and some old stuff. I'm going to say it, and I want somebody to challenge me. I'm just saying. But at the end of the day, 
Christ's work is being done. And that's what it means by unconditional love. The love is being spread out in areas where the church had us believe that love never was. And just like you said, don't don't tip me with a good time. Don't challenge me. Because once again, you're going to have people that are going to heed the call and you are one of those people. So make sure that y'all please check out That's Russell on all streaming platforms. Go on his YouTube channel. You can check out some of his older content, I mean, uh, projects, which, baby, they timeless too, okay? Like I said, uh, Faith Twerk is, is my shit. Uh, the song, the fuck am I going to do that? Because he said the F word, so you know I love him when he does. Uh, 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 didn't he do it? Didn't he do that song right there? Like, God is working. It's just, are you open-minded enough? And is your heart not hardened to be able to receive it in this manner? So, thank you. Uh, I'll pin that comment. I'll read it for you. Uh, the one thing I love about you, bro, is you always go deeper than most ever attempt or desire. You talking about you, fam? Oh, you talking about me? Yeah. I thought you talking, talking about you. Oh, no, he's talking about you already. Praise the Lord. Hey, Amber! Well, I'm, well, I'm going to say that's for the both of us. Because we both going, we're both going deeper in God for ourselves. Already. And that's the purpose work out your own soul salvation seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and what all these other things will be added shall be added and we're God. living testimonies of that so thank you so much russell for blessing us once again with um your story and being um courageous and being bold and really walking in your christ stuff and it can get scary because you saw what they did to christ or better yet what christ allowed them to do right let me say no that. I wish y'all did like, to Christ. Down, and I'm glad that he did. Because had my ass been on that cross, baby, I would have told them, break open, open all the seals. I need you to bring them four apocalypse, the horsemen. Drop that key in the seat. Let's get this shit popping. Get this. I'm done with this. But everybody who can, please sow a seed you can, to please. love on my behalf in Jesus' name. And the Lord is going to bless and increase you in Jesus' name. Love y'all, and thank you for having me on your platform, bubs. Go in the peace and grace of God in Jesus' name. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Have the rest of a good night. Love you, bro. All right, then. Love you, too. All right, y'all. That was my bro. That's wrestling. Make sure y'all check him out on all streaming platforms. Y'all, please forgive me. I look like a bum. Okay. A nigga going through it. Okay, my titties still nice. They still man titties and nice. They still muscular and stuff, but still, I'm looking a little busted, and that's all right. I'm in my cocoon phase. Okay, I'm going through it, but that's okay. But anyway, make sure <laughs> y'all check out um, my bro Russell um, again on all platforms: YouTube, Title, Apple Music, Google Play. Uh, make sure y'all get his views up and, and listen streams, numbers up on Spotify, like support, 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 and share. That's probably one of the most important things that you can do for Russell. Share it. Share it. There are some people who need to hear what Russell is saying. Now, everybody may not rock with it because Russell is a real-ass person. And he going to be in the world, but not of the world, and talk about what's going on in the world so that we can, you can't hear can y'all hear me now? Girl, that's the Lord telling me to get my ass off. Thank y'all for watching. Make sure y'all go ahead and stream Russell stuff on all of his platforms. Again, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Instagram. Yeah, it's time to get off. YouTube, <laughs> Title, Google Play, um, uh, uh, Spotify. Let's get him up. And the most important thing that you can do is share 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 that's the most important thing that you can do okay and again if you feel blessed and compelled by your spirit because i'm gonna touch and agree if you feel like blessing bubs a god with a seed no matter what amount the seed is i'll be grateful and appreciative of it okay i'm just saying you see you want to ask me something can you ask me in the um dm me um amber i'm gonna cut this off so thank y'all so much okay cool no problem that's cool no problem all right, thank y'all so much for joining me again for uh, 
this interview with Russell, and I will see y'all again soon. Peace.